Let's have our seat in his presence and let's begin to give the Lord another resounding clap offering, giving him praise in the assembly of the brethren as we call out our brethren for their testimonies. Brother Peter said, please run out quickly. Akochi E. Samuel, Mr. and Mrs. Agbase, Musa Mohammed, and Dr. Grace Adaido. Please make your clap mighty unto the Lord, for he is able. Make it louder and louder and louder. Take the names again first. Peter Said, Akbochi Samuel, Mr. and Mrs. Abbasi, Musa Muhammad, and Dr. Grace Adaido. Make the clap better unto the Lord. Amen. Your name and straight to the point. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. I'm Brother Peter Seid by name. I want to give glory to the Lord for the impartation of our Father in the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. He has been an inspiration unto my life, and I'm not taking that for granted. Since 2019, I made I asked God for a steady job. I lost my job in 2017 because I don't like what it was all about. So I killed on to the source of God where our daddy in the Lord made a proclamation on anyone who wants a job and is in need of a job. That job has already come to the person. And in 2019, 20, uh, at the minister's fire fifth, flaming conference, I keyed on to that declaration, and in 2023, it was made manifest. I got an uh, employment letter from an auto mechanical uh, center that is in line with the nature of my business and what I wanted to do, and it was, it was all mind-blowing. I didn't expect God to answer me as fast as that. I opened the whole thing. It was just exactly what I needed. I'm not taking it for granted. I want to give glory to the Lord God Almighty Amen. for his answer prayer. Amen. Your name and straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Samuel Apochi. I want to thank God for his goodness, for his faithfulness, and all I have seen through him. In 2014, I decided to go for a PhD program. And when I was going to register for that program, 
I was attacked by armed robbers on the road. They attacked me with gum, guns on my head. There were about four. And seized the car I was driving in. But to the glory of God, I was able to register for the program using the the uh, affidavit. But when that car was taken, I told God that because he is God and because I had not told him anything to use in buying that car, the devil has no alternative. But that car was going to be recovered. And true to type, it was recovered after four days. One month after, the credentials, the originals, were thrown out. The originals were found intact in the same envelope in which they threw them out with everything intact. It was a rainy season, but nothing happened to them. And I want to thank God for that. But my testimony, I've given this testimony before, but my testimony today is that after two months, two years of coursework, I abandoned the project. I abandoned the, 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 the work. And it was like a burden on my neck. But one day, on, I think, first, I think one of the Sundays, the first Sundays of, of 2020, Daddy mentioned in one of the messages he was preaching, it was a statement he made. He said, if you have dropped something, something you need to do, and you dropped it because you couldn't continue, go back to it. And that touched me. I decided to revisit it. So I went back, revalidated the work, revalidated the admission, and today I can tell you, I have successfully finished the PhD program. I have defended my thesis, and my thesis was one of the best. I want to give God the glory, and I want to thank him for his mercy upon my life and my family. In the name of Jesus, the grace to start and to finish is to release every spell of abandoned project is broken in Jesus' name. Your name and for time's sake, please move fast. Good morning, church. My name is Oche Agbese. Beside me is my God's gift of a wife, Lydia Agbese, my children, Mercy and Adriel. I'm here to appreciate God for his goodness, his wonders, and his mercies in our lives. How he has blessed us as a family. Key among the testimony is um, 2015, we got married. 2016, when it was time for her delivery, she had, my wife had prolonged labor, almost 48 hours. Then I sent a message to the home church. Uh, by his message, I'm a leader in the home church. And the real leader broadcasted it to a number of houses, and prayers went up. Brethren, under 30 minutes before home church was finished, she came forth. We had already prepared for CS. I bought blood and everything, but because of those prayers, God helped her, and she came forth speedily. Now, because of that challenge, when it was his turn, we started praying for easy delivery, for easy labor. Then different people called and said they saw the enemy, not my wife, having issues during childbirth. But we trusted God came here for healing and deliverance services. My wife took time from work. We'll come here on other days, go to the garden and pray. God answered our prayer so well that on Christmas Day 2019, we were here in the garden. That year, there was jamboree for families. We went home. She felt she had overeaten. She was uncomfortable. By the time she realized there was labor, I rushed, took my first daughter, put in the car, took her back, put in the car. Before I could come back, baby was coming out. Baby came forth on the bed. We rushed took them to the hospital after the child birth, and the nurses gave me the title that I'm now qualified to be called a mid-husband. <laughs> now, fast forward a couple of years later, um, he was always getting cough and catar. So because of that, they tested his genotype in September 2021 and said he was AS. Last year, April, all of a sudden, that same cough came back. That time, my wife had a dream where somebody gave him a medicine in the night, and then 
the cough came so serious. They went to the hospital. He had to be put on oxygen. Next thing they checked again and said he was now SS. We said, but it was the same hospital you tested some months ago. They said, no, it has changed. It's now SS. They gave him transfusion. He had all the signs of a crisis, bone pain and all of that. You couldn't check again for three months because they said after transfusion, you have to wait for three months. After three months, we went to go and do a confirmatory test. He still came out SS. But we held on to the testimonies we heard from this altar. SS changed to AA. We kept believing God, kept praying. Multiple testimonies over the course of the commanding the day we held on to. And again, my wife had some um, the dreams when senior pastor and the wife, our father and the Lord, came to our house and prayed for us and did all manner of ministrations. Brethren, on Wednesday the 6th, two weeks ago, we were here for communion service, seated right there. Just as service was closing, senior pastor declared again, HIV is cleaned out, hepatitis B and C cleaned out, SS changed to AA. We held on to that word. We went for a test on Thursday. It came out AA. We said, let's wait and have a confirmatory test. We went again and tried it again. It came out AA. We want to give God all the praise. May his name alone be glorified. We don't take it for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. What a mighty, 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 mighty God. It pays not only to be in church, but to be fully committed. See the planting of the family, home church, calling the members, calling on other leaders. And God is just swiftly and smoothly fulfilling his purpose. SS changed to AA. Whatever needs to be changed in your life today shall be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Your name is straight to the point. Okay. Praise the Lord. My name is Yunusa Mohammed. I want to thank God for my life because if I remember, because of me and my family, God created this dynamics. My brother and my sister, I don't suffer. But today, oh God, I was seeing a thing that I never, never even think about it. When I come from another religion to this religion, they was pursuing me for house. They was mocking me. They was laughing at me. My life is just anyhow useless. No help for anywhere. Just take it. He's asked me to take the testimony for him for time's sake. Our brother came from the other religion in our lucky branch, had an encounter with the Lord and converted to Christianity. The father being a member of the other religion and a known herbalist came strongly after him. They did all manner of things to dissuade him, but he made a statement the, way they, the day they drove him out of the house when they asked him to choose. And he said, I choose this God that I have seen that is alive. And if this God is alive, Baba, that was October. He said, Baba, before March this year, you are going to become a Christian. It was, to the man, the boy was just talking nonsense. And things began to unfold. He said he took his cattle and his bike because he's a header and went and sold so that he can raise money and begin to do other things for his life. His father came and took the bike, the, the three circle he bought and collected all his funds. The boy didn't, he didn't deter him. God kept helping him. And through our branch pastor, he relocated to... to Abuja and to the glory dome and kept serving God faithfully. Brethren, he said he normally contacts his mother, but on the 5th of March, he contacted his friend that knows the family and said, How are my friends? How are my family? And the boy said, Your mother and your father has been trying to reach you. He said, What happened? So on the sixth, he bought Richard Carr, the loaded to another phone because they collected his own. And called his father. Shock. He was in shock. The father cried all through the time they were talking on the phone. Asking him to forgive him. He said, Baba, what happened? Why should I forgive you? The father said, you know, you are the one that was supposed to take the throne of this idol. The boy said, but I rejected it. He said, you don't know what happened. Now the mother took the phone and all the siblings, they kept begging him to forgive. Now look at what happened. Early this year, the man felt terribly sick. And they were pursuing him in the dream. 
he saw death face to face. But he said that one of his sisters in the same house worships in our center at Lekki and was always joining, commanding the day midnight prayer. So the girl took it up and because the man was already dying and could no longer resist the Christian prayers, the daughter was praying for this old man. The following morning, the man, every pain died. He never saw those people again. And he asked his daughter to lead him to Christ. As we are talking, that man is in our church in Lakey Branch. The son said, before the end of March, and 5th March, the man gave his life to Christ. And he's here to return all the glory to God. The previous habalis of the other religion. Can you stand on your feet and let's give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. No wonder our guy is so, 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 so excited. You shall be saved along with your household. I declare that shall be your portion in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a praise and please take your seat. Your name is straight to the point. My name is uh, Dr. Grace Adailo. But I'm popularly known as Mama Africa International. <laughs> to the glory of God, I want to thank the mercies of His Almightiness for every privilege for me to appear on this holy mountain this morning. And I want to thank the Lord for the conception of His servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. For my sake, he was created. For my sake alone, he was created. And I want to thank the womb, the memory of the womb that conceived him. And I want to give appreciation to the memory of the breast which he sucked. And I want to thank the day that this great man of God was created. Yes. And I want to thank the Lord for the privilege of his calling and the grace Amen. to respond. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to the testimony. I'm here this morning to declare this testimony to the greatness of the Almighty God. On the 14th of this month, I was announced as a permanent secretary representing the North Central. Daddy, I want to thank you so much for investing in me. Why I'm saying all these things? Daddy, without the grace of God upon your life, this testimony would have not been shared and this destiny would have not been in place. Amen. I want to thank God because tomorrow, by the grace of God, and I am the first indigenous um, permanent secretary and the first female permanent secretary and the first North Central permanent secretary. And coming from FCT, if you know my background, you will permit me to say all that I've said. But to the glory of Almighty God, tomorrow, by the grace of God, I will be sworn in as the permanent secretary representing the North Central, including the FCT. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a bigger, bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. I think one of the critical things is I have ministered to the people of this, the indigenous people of this place before the Bagi and all the, and these people. And one of the things that have been their challenge is having given the federal capital having given the nation such a place, they seem to be very, very backward in many, many ways. Marginalized. Traded their land, sold everything, and just nothing. But we preached to them, speak, spoke to them in one of their national conferences, and we trusted the Lord that God should begin to raise people among them and make them voices. And that is very critical in this testimony. Can we give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise? says, I and the sons that God has given to me were for signs and wonders. Can you give me volume, please? 
Let's give Jesus a big clap and a shout of praise for that testimony. God is about to promote somebody without knowing anybody. God is about to elevate somebody without having any connections. When you are connected to the Most High God, you are most connected above others in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, help me give Jesus a big clap of hand for all those testimonies that we just heard this morning. God is moving you forward and every one of your family members also shall come to know this same Jesus Christ that you know like the young man from the other religion in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Help me welcome your neighbor on the left and on the right and tell them today is the day you've been waiting for. God is set for your lifting. I welcome all our online viewers. You're watching from all around the world. I believe that God will give you a word in season that will transform your life and destiny today in the name of Jesus. Our seeds of destiny today is titled, Evil Money, the Proceeds of Iniquity. We understand by way of summarized summary that um, one of the proceeds of iniquity called evil money is a proceed proceeds of prostitution. Leviticus 19.29 says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, um, lest the land fall toward them and the land become full of wickedness. We understand that prostitution does not only refer to a situation where a young lady or woman decides to hire a room in a brothel, but it can also be one uh, who uh, makes her home available to be called, that is, she's on call part time. When she's called, she answers the call. Uh, wholesale, according to God's servants, he says, there's wholesale and there's retail prostitution. Whichever it is, God does not accept it. We are just encouraged to understand that it is an evil money and the proceeds of it is evil. It doesn't amount to anything. There's so much more. I encourage you to read all of it when you get back home and I know that the Lord will bless you. Lift up your hands as we pray. Say after me, Lord, I resist every temptation and I receive your grace to resist the temptation of fornication and adultery and other forms of immorality. Help me not to trade my body in exchange for money, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We proceed right away this morning as we receive the ministry of Dunamis Voice. And they'll be ministering a medley of songs received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. The medley is titled, Lord, You Know Me. Lord, You Know Me. How many of you know that God knows you? And how many of you know that God has your word in the mouth of his servant this morning? As a singer and minister, I believe you'll be blessed. Let's receive them with a clap offering. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Father, we give you the praise. Go on ahead and just honor him and adore him and worship him. It's a privilege. I remain forever connected to you. Oh Lord, you're the only one. Not in my past and present. Hey Lord, you are the only one in my future. All I want. That is, you are the only person that can be in the past and be in the present and be in the future at the same time. You don't have to be in my past, then move from there to come to my present and then move from there into my future. Even before I reached the future, you were there. Where I'm coming from, you have been there and you are there. And where I am now, you are too present. That is why I cannot be afraid of the issues of my past. And I can't be afraid of the issues of my future. And the moment is under control. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Elohim. Blessed be your name. Let not one person leave you the same way they have come. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. Without you, my life is meaningless. Without you, I remain forever connected to you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome this morning in the precious name of Jesus. All our brothers and sisters connected from around the world, we are happy to be with you this morning. We started the subject on, on Wednesday, and if you are not in the service on Wednesday, I'd like you to pick up the message. It is unraveling the mystery of faith. We have seen um, in that study, the objective remains the same. First of all, to understand the mystery of faith, understanding the profit of faith, and then the way of faith. We looked at all of that in the midweek service. We said that faith was such a difficult subject for so many people, but faith is easy to, to understand and faith is easy to operate. In, the, in that service, we looked at three things that faith is about. First of all, we said that faith, you may not be able to write down because of time. Uh, faith is a combination of word revelation, heart conviction, the right declaration, the right action. When a person has the word revelation, the revelation of the word of God, and he is convinced in his heart from that revelation of the word, and his, and his mouth and utterance is changed, and he produces the right action, then he will see the right outcome. So there's no mystery about faith other than having the word, being convinced, Saying the right things, acting the right ways, and then seeing the right result. That was number one. Number two, we said that faith is carrying out required word-based responsibility in order to experience desired word-based possibility. Responsibility required of you from God from his word, carrying them out, then you see the possibility you are expected to see. We looked at that in detail. And thirdly, 
we say that faith is laying hold on the reality, the reliability, and trustability of God. You are at a point in your life where you know God is real. God is reliable. And God is trustable. So you hold on to his reality. You hold on to his reliability. You hold on to his trustability. So that you can see his possibility. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say a loud amen. We looked at all of that. When we come to the prophet of faith, we shall look at, at, at what we saw last week. But now, we are going to go further to look at what faith is about. I'm going to look at three more in this service. And then the final three in the Second service. So, number one, num this is number four now, right? Which is one for this, actually number four, because this is part two of the message. So, faith, number four, is seen beyond the visible realities of the natural world into the invisible reality of the spiritual world. Producing or rather I'm bringing forth supernatural manifestations. Say that again. Faith is seen beyond the visible realities of the natural world. The reality says there is a pain on the leg. The reality says there is scarcity in the land. But faith is seen beyond the visible realities. What you can see of the natural world into the invisible realities. Realities. In the natural world, what I see says there is a diagnosis. In the invisible world realm, what I see is that by his stripes I am healed. In the visible world, it is clear that there is scarcity in the land. In the spiritual realm, he said my God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches in glory. So you see. Beyond the visible realities. Of the natural world. Into the invisible realities. Of the spiritual world. Bringing forth. Supernatural. Manifestation. Somebody say amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to verse 3. He said faith. Is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 18, the Bible said, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So in the journey of faith, you are bringing into reality the things that are real but cannot be seen. Does that make sense to anybody? This building was real before it was built. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the realm of the spirit it was real before it was built the supplies that built it was there before it was built in Romans chapter 4 verse 17 we saw that the Bible said concerning Abraham as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations 
before him whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were somebody say it loud amen how many of you know that there are things that are real but you cannot see not everything is real can be seen for example when was the last time you saw your oxygen the oxygen you breathe in do you see it but is it real you have a liver right in there can you see it now is it real not every reality can be seen in the journey of faith you are bringing into into the visible world the realities that can't be seen you are not healed the day you were healed you were healed before you were sick i hear what i'm saying he said by his stripes you were healed second peter chapter 2 and in verse 24 By whose stripes ye were healed. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. If you were healed, then you is healed. <laughs> you were healed, you is healed. It is making the way of healing to be his healing that becomes faith. A woman had cancer of the leg the other day, malignant melanoma. I stood on the altar of the commanded the midnight prayers and declaring against that particular cancer, malignant melanoma, Kaposi sarcoma. And they were watching. She had been to the hospital already. Pathology showed it was malignant melanoma. Next thing to do is to, is to amputate the leg. But the word came right from the altar. And that healing that existed before even the affliction came was released. Next thing, the cancer dried on the spot. Somebody say amen. So in your journey of faith, it is important to begin to know what has God done for me that is, yet, is not yet physical? He began to pull them in. Listen, my brothers, there is no shortage of money in this world. It's just that it is in the hands of wrong people at times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, you are seeing the invisible realities. You are, you are bringing into the vis into, you are making visible the realities that are not yet visible. Seen beyond the visible realities of the natural world into the invisible realities of the spiritual world. Bringing forth supernatural manifestations. Somebody say a loud amen. One day a young man when the university graduated shortly, medical doctor, he said he wants to get married. I said, put on a paper the kind of woman you want to marry. So he gave a description. Spiritual things, physical things, everything. It was all complete like that. And I said to him, I said, so who does the, this description fit? And just one person came to mind. One. I said, all right, pray very well, trust the Lord, and go and speak with that person. And he went to the person, and the person said no. All the friends convinced her to say no, and she said no. But I'm using that to give you an example of bringing into the visible. What cannot be defined cannot be found. The sad thing is that that person that said no, 
after 20 something to getting close to 30 years is still yet to be located because of friends hallelujah I prophesy to you today what is yours no devil shall divert it from you if you are saying amen shout the Lord and say amen your healing that was already achieved even before the sickness came I prophesy that healing is released to you now shout the Lord and say amen let us go to, to point number five which is number two for today and that is faith is coming into agreement with the almighty for the fulfillment of his commitment. Hallelujah. Faith is coming into agreement with the Almighty for the fulfillment of his commitment. In the journey of faith, God said it, you agreed. Coming into agreement to the Almighty for the fulfillment of his commitment. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 1 to verse 2. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. That is, agree with him. He said this, agree. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. He said, how can two be agreed? Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. 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 So, the faith matter is very simple. God said, if you obey, and serve me you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure some people said how is that possible in the journey of faith you stupidly agree agreement with god is what is called belief i agree with you means i believe what you said and what is the content of the agreement? What is the entire detail of the agreement? If they obey and they serve him. So I, I agree. So I will obey you. So I will serve you. What is the commitment of God? They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. All right? I am not the one to make God do his own. When they say a person is a great man of faith, it means that he greatly agrees with God easily. <laughs> he agrees with God effortlessly, neatly. Uh, he believes God stupidly. He has no questions. He's not in argument with God. You know the way Mumusha's wife, in quote, agrees with her husband on everything. And then the husband spoils her on everything to the envy of the rebellious ones. <laughs> Hallelujah. One woman came the other day. Uh, sometime, uh, this was in the real wine church. And he said, I, I just look at the way you are just saying sa, 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 sa to your husband talking to my wife, and just, she was very confused. On one side, she felt like it was beautiful to behold. On another side, she was feeling that maybe it's too much. That particular one tore apart her home with her, with her hand. That one can jack the husband in the morning. Where are you going?
Hallelujah. This is, this is what faith is all about. You are yes sir God on every issue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No argument. No complaint. No quarrel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even when you ask me to do things I don't understand. Yes, sir. Example. Peter at the lake. Luke chapter 5 verse 4 and 5. Launch your net into the deep for a drought. He said, no, sir. I have toiled all night. I caught nothing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had this done, he in, in, enclosed a great multitude of fishes until the net break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same second example, wedding in Cana of Galilee. In John chapter 2 and in verse 5. They needed water. They needed wine. The mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Yes, sir. Pour water into the pot. Nobody says, it's not water they are asking for, it's wine. Yes, sir. Draw it out now and give the gov governor of the feast and let them drink. No, sir. To drink water, <laughs> you said we should pour what you we should pour water. You have not mixed any concentrate yet. You didn't add any coloring agent. It is still water. Give, serve the man first. Yes, sir. And they served the man, and it was no longer water. Over analysis equals paralysis. Many times we overanalyze instructions and we paralyze manifestations. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We just paralyze and destroy the manifestations we are meant to see. Somebody asked me, he said, when God called you into ministry, what was your plan in case it failed? I said there was no plan for failure because failure was not an option. Am I communicating at all? I am not going to analyze instruction. I didn't know where I was coming to sleep in Abuja here. I didn't know where I would sleep. I carried my bag from Joss and stepped into this city, not knowing where to sleep. I came down at a zone five, four area, zone five area there, where the, where the motor park was then. Stepped out of the vehicle, pulled my shoes, held my bag in one hand, my shoe in the other hand, and was walking across the road like a madman. Why did I do that? He said, wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I give it to you as a possession. In the course of walking across the road and wondering where to go, then I met a young man. Brother Paul, what are you doing here? So I came for something. Where are you going? I want to go to Guagalada because I had this, a, a schoolmate there who was teaching in the school of nursing then. He said, do you know Gokwalada? I said, I don't know. For me, I thought Gokwalada is like from here to uh, that, that junction here. <laughs> he said, do you know Gokwalada? I said, no. He said, if I... <laughs> I said, okay. So what I do now? What I do? He said, I should follow, follow them to their house. That was how I entered the bus all the way to as AYA Junction. And he was telling me, Brother Paul, this kind of fire that we used to know, we need it in this town, in this city. I, have, I didn't say anything. He said it like five times. That, then I said, that is why I am here. God sent me. He said, wow! He screamed in the bus. Long story made short, here we are. Long story made short. Huh? And you can go on and on and on and on and on. I still saw the, that brother and his whole family prayed for them on the altar the other day. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God said it. You said yes, sir. You are not, you are not arguing. You are not quarreling. You, are not, you may not understand. I was paying tight for so many years without seeing the result 
I was doing kingdom covenant practice without seeing physical, tangible result. But I kept at it. If God said it, I am at it. If it is in the Bible, I am at it. And then, boom! All of a sudden, it was like arrears. Because some people tell you, do this, you'll get this. There are times you do this, you don't get this immediately. You don't get this immediately. And it doesn't mean that you are not doing the right thing. But sometimes you need to do the right thing long enough to arrive at the right results. Be not weary in well-doing. He said, for in due season, and only him knows when season is due. But there is incubation process. In due season, you shall reap. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. I prophesy to somebody here. Your change of story is happening right now. Your change of story is happening right now. Your change of story is happening right now. If you are saying amen, shout it like a believer. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Faith cannot be in place until man is totally in agreement with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me your son, your only son, Isaac. Yes, sir. Get out of your father's house to the land I will show you. Yes, sir. It's not, where is the land? No. Just keep going. When you reach there, I will tell you. Yes, sir. Go to the mountain of Moriah. And offer your son Isaac on one of the mountains. Which particular mountain? Just keep going. Reach there first. Go to the house of Jesse and anoint for me a king. Which one is the king? What is his name? Go there first. <laughs> Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Finally. This will be number six or seven four five six all right number six says faith is walking the world to dominate the world walking the world to dominate the world in the journey of faith you are walking the world to dominate your world. Faith is walking the world to win the world. Walking. Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 4 he said the just behold his soul which is uplifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall take charge by faith. In First John chapter 5 and in verse 4, the Bible said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that causes you to dominate your world. Even your faith. Somebody say aloud, Amen. We have a dominion mandate from creation. Somebody say dominion mandate. All right, that is in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-eight, where God gave us a mandate of dominion, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, "Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea." And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Take charge. Be in control. And I can tell you that dominion mandate is realizable by faith. This system of the world is looking for who to subdue. It's looking for who to overwhelm. Apart 
from the tool of faith, you can easily get overwhelmed by life. Overwhelmed by the situations of life. In medical school, about two or three hundred level, physiology laboratory, we're taking each other's blood pressure. Oh, somebody took, took the, my blood pressure. Then, the blood pressure is high. Then, and there was every right for blood pressure to be high because it's, uh, both parents <coughs> had blood pressure and that, that kind of a thing. And I looked at the person and I said, it's not my blood pressure. It's not. It can be. My blood pressure is not high. According to God's servant, Papo Yereko, both the person taking the blood pressure and the person whose blood pressure is being taken, both of them are touching the machine. So it's possible that it's the other person's blood pressure. <laughs> he said, me and you are touching the machine, so it's possible it's your own. That's, doctor, it must be your blood pressure that has you. <laughs> I went on ruggedly. Went through university. And I'm not going to check that blood pressure another time because it's not, nothing is pressuring my life. By the time I checked it again, almost 25, 27 years later, it was 112 over 120 over 80 or something. When I was at the Abuja airport here, oh, some people had the machine, oh, body mass index, can you help us pray on it for us? They were checking people with blood pressure. Okay, can we check your own? All right, you can check. Hallelujah. Went to the restroom one day, all I saw was blood. This is almost 30 years ago. Blood? No way. It's not me. Back to where you came from. The, the, the first day it appeared was the last day. If you are not, if apart from faith, you will be under, under the control of many forces. Whether you will be in control or under control is a question of faith. Somebody say loud, Amen. You can you can break family patterns, family patterns, family pa negative family affliction patterns. By the force of faith. And I pray today in the name of Jesus. Every pattern of your father's house. Every pattern of your family. That is, that is confronting your life. I declare that pattern is broken now. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord say amen. Living in mastery. In this world, it's a function of faith. I think you were in New York City, right? When they talked about a, a very terrible storm or terrible weather, right? What, what, was it a typhoon? Co Connecticut. It was a snowstorm. A snowstorm that was going to affect the flight. You were the one, right? Yes. I was here. Yes. And you were there. Yes. And it was going to affect the flight of return back home. And the time of return was already fixed. And she told me, and I was here. And I said, no, that storm can go elsewhere. Not there. Just go where you need to go. But as for you, you are boarding your flight and coming. Somebody say amen. amen. The weather people have to apologize because they were embarrassed that for the first time their forecast didn't happen. It went somewhere and landed. And the, 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 it went, where it went to, they had to apologize to them for not, for not forecasting them. for them. <laughs> Only because one tiny man is standing here because madame must come home. <laughs> Hey! Hey! 
Somebody lift up your voice and shout the loud and say amen. Shout the loud most amen. Amen at the top of your voice. Give the Lord a praise. Listen, the summary is living in mastery in this world requires the agency of faith. Let me give you two examples. Example number one, the master walking on the water. Walking on the waves of the sea by the power of faith. In Matthew chapter 14 verse 24, all the way to verse 31, the Bible said, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? In other words, Peter walked on the, wa on the waves for as long as faith was in place. When faith was replaced by fear, he began to sink. You walk on the troubles of life. You walk on the storms of life. You walk on the waves of life by the power of faith. Second example. Is the patriarchs of old. We read their story in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, all the way to verse 33. He said, And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. See? Subdued, 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 subdued wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions through faith. That is somebody's portion. That is somebody's portion. That is somebody's portion. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. What is the profit of faith? We looked at the profit of faith from midweek service. We said the first thing was that faith is a secret of victory in life's battles. If you want to fight and not become a victim of the battles of life, you need the shield of faith. It's a secret of victory in life's battles. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Number two, we said that faith is a secret of spiritual power. It's a secret of spiritual power and of course it's needed for experts and results. It's a secret of spiritual power. You want to have power. Stephen was full of faith and power. Secret of spiritual power. Thirdly, faith is a secret of possibilities. All things are possible to him that believeth. Things are impossible to him that disbelieveth, to him that doubteth. But all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible. Faith is the secret of possibilities. That was where we stopped last Wednesday. I will beg you to pick up the message of Wednesday. Now, what is the benefit or profit of faith number four? Faith is the secret of possessing possessions. Anything that is yours in God, you take delivery of them by faith. Possessing one's possession is the secret of possessing our possession. Possessions in God. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. He said, be not slothful. 
but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith is the secret of possessing our possession. Is there something that is yours in God that is not in your hands yet? It can become yours by faith. Number five. Faith is the secret of evidence. Hebrews 11 okay, is the secret of evidence. Good report or testimonies. Evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Evidential Christianity is a product of faith. Evidential Christianity that is evidential is a product of faith. That is, nobody will look at you and see you as a mockery. I announce to someone here today, every mockery involving your life is over forever. From this moment forward, those who see and know you will know that you are not wasting your time, that you are serving the living God. Shout the loudest, amen. Number six, faith is a secret of escape from danger and disaster. Escape from danger and disaster. Escape from danger and disaster. In Hebrews chapter 11, where we read, it said true faith, they escaped the edge of the sword. They escape the edge of the soul. They escape the edge of the soul. They stop the mouths of lions. Quench the violence of the fire. You will not be cut short before your time. You will not be buried by any calamity. And number seven. Faith is the secret of kingdom exploits. If you read Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 all the way, we saw all of that. We are, what shall I more say? For the time will fill me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and of Samuel of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained the promises Stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. And all of that is called the hall, faith's hall of fame. All the people that made astounding results in the Bible, the Bible says it was a product of faith, secret of kingdom exploits. What was the way of faith we talked about? Just two things we said on Wednesday about the way of faith. And that is, first, know the Lord. When you know God, you don't doubt him. When you know God, it is easy to believe him. Know the Lord. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Know the Lord. Many people know cars, they know movies, they know dress, they know cloth. They know the name of everything. The only thing they don't know is God. Only person they don't know is God. Hallelujah. Know the Lord. Number two, know the word. Whatever is not based on word is not faith. It's fake. You will fulfill your days. Amen. What, what scripture are you standing on? No, I just believe. I just believe. But there's nothing like that. I can't be cut short before my time. Amen. What word is the one that you are sitting on that makes you bold that no witch can cut you short? No, I just, I just know. No witch is strong enough to kill me. Just like that. No. That is presumption. That is 
Just natural, physical, bold face. It has no redemptive power. It has to be rooted ruggedly on war. Because forever, oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. That is why the devil will try to temper with your confidence in the word. Whatever tries to knock the word, your confidence in the word is attacking directly your faith. Talk about that another day. Finally, what's our conclusion today? One, to make the most of life in the earth, faith is compulsory. If you want to make the most of your life, without faith it is impossible. To make the most of your life, the most of your Christian journey, just, just to make the most of life, Faith is compulsory. You hear a man like Kenneth Hagin said in those days, I have not had a headache in 50 years. You see, someone like Kenneth and Gloria Copeland sitting down, breaking the wall, enjoying their life. 80 something. To make the most of life, faith. Is mandatory. And secondly, the knowledge of God and of his word are critical to the life of faith. We saw that already. The knowledge of God, the knowledge of his word are critical. That prayer that I may know him and the power of his resurrection is a good prayer. Now as we follow this path of faith, that is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 again. Romans chapter 10 verse 8, 8 and verse 17. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of his word are critical to the life of faith. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Before this month of March is out. That boy told his father, before March you will give your life to Christ. <laughs> before this month of March is out, God will give you an evidence that will show you that you have not believed in vain. Stand on your feet in a shout of praise. I know you are writing, but take your seat one moment so you can stand well. Use the opportunity of this time to stretch your body. Stand on your feet in the shadow, pray. Hallelujah. Will you lift your hands and just give him the praise, give him the honor, give him the adoration for his word to us today. For his word to us today. For his word to us today. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Ancient of days. Lily of the valley. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Adonai. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. Oh Lord, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. We give you glory, Lord. As we You are wonder, wonder, wonderful.
And see, I come and say, Father, thank you for your word to me today. 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 I ask, Lord, for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Again, Father, thank you for your word to me today. I ask for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and speak to God. A fresh baptism. In the name of Jesus, lift your two hands and say after me, say, Father, Father help me to know you, me to that know I may know you and the power of your resurrection. Draw me closer to you, Lord, in relationship, in intimacy with you. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and speak to God. Help me to know you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift your hands and say after me, say, Father, Father open, my eyes open my eyes to behold wonders, to behold wonders out of your world. Open, open my eyes to see wondrous to things see wondrous out things. of your book. Of your oh, Lord, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and speak to God. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands and give him the praise. Lift your hands high.
because you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Oh Lord, there is no one else like you. Seeing you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Oh Lord. Just one more time. Sing you are great. You are great. You do miracle. So great. There is no one else like you. Oh Lord. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracle so great. The rest of the world is Oh Lord, there is no one else. Lift up your two hands everywhere you are. I see the release of possessions. I see the release of inheritance. The things that are yours in God that the enemy held back. Your marital settlement, your fruit of the womb. Your final settlement job-wise. That mantle, that grace. I see a release. Lift your hands when I say in the name of Jesus, you scream, I receive. And I see a deliverance from winds of destruction. That's right. Deliverance from winds of destruction. Lift your hands. Tamuno. Will you step forward? Let me pray for you. Lift up your two hands. Are you ready to receive your inheritance? When I say in the name of Jesus, you scream, I receive and place your hand on your head. Father, let it be. Mahashada galabaya da galaya dura gala la 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 la. Master Freta. Gaka shatala. Are you ready to receive your possession? In the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. When I say the name of Jesus, one, two, three, you scream, I receive and receive what is coming upon you, what is yours. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three, I receive. Rata kaka pesha kena feto na pwani na yo. Let a corner of the shack of the top 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 Receive now. Receive now. In the name of Jesus, every evil wind looking for you is returned back to hell. And from today, your faith shall produce results that are visible. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say amen. amen. I see someone healed of peptic ulcer disease and arthritis involving 
the knee. I see a breast affliction with someone with a name that starts with a G right now. And I declare it healed right now. The pain is gone. The symptoms are gone. The tumor is gone. And everything here is gone in the name of Jesus. A lower back condition is also healed. You came here this morning and something happened to you. Something left you. Including the cases I've mentioned. You can step forward quickly and God bless you. Give the Lord a big clap people and take your seat one minute. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. 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 While the people come out and we are taking their testimonies, I want you to know that we are in a very, very season of drastic scarcity and shortage in our nation. For that purpose, we are in the season of welfare administration to the brethren. We did that the last sun, the Sunday before last. We did that last Sunday. We'll be doing that this Sunday. Just take a look at what happened last Sunday, just briefly, in terms of welfare distribution. Somebody give the Lord a big clap of hand. Many of us, after service is closed, we go home. So you are not aware that this happened. But this is to let you know that the responsibility of church. We do this kind of thing all the time. Every month, there is impartation for sewing machine for this and that, but we have not made it so known. But it's important that we know for two reasons. Number one, so that you can understand the, assignment, the responsibility of church. And then number two, so that in case God touches your heart to be a part of ministering to the brethren. The Bible says that they distributed all things in common. That is, as much as you are saying, Lord, I am a member of this church. I am not in that category. But I want to alleviate the challenges of those in that category. You are fully welcome. Somebody said, till when will we continue? I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> when the job, I mean, the, 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 there's a proverb that says that we apply hot sense when the sun is hot and flies are thick. 
uh, people are struggling in all manner of areas. And uh, please, this is not um, an opportunity for redundancy. It's not an avenue to say, oh, there is free food distribution in church, so I will just sit down and do nothing. The best you will do is to ensure that you, you, don't, you don't represent this category. That is, you try your best. Don't be shy if you have the need, but don't struggle to be in need because something is being distributed. I have, I have seen um, a mystery. I was talking with Dr. Mr. Nancy yesterday where I gave somebody, I was in, in the car and I gave somebody who needed welfare money. And then another person just ran and said, what, where is my own? Who doesn't need welfare at all? Well, please. So where is my own? And insisted I gave her her own before she left. So that's the kind of mentality at times we have in this world. Don't force yourself to be in need where you are not in need. Just try your best so that you are not the one that is in the category of the needy. The Lord will bless you. So this is happening and we believe. And then of course you saw that it is passing through the home church platform. He said, do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. This is not a Christmas distribution where people will come from the road and come from everywhere and then even block the people that are members of the church. This is not a type. This is ministration to people in the house. And please ensure that you are fully located. This is also one of the assignments of the home church. To ensure that nobody suffers in silence. To ensure that everybody is catered for. So please be well located so that in seasons like this, you are not left out. God bless you in Jesus' name. And today is, and this week is the week of the Kaduna Crusade. Can you show us the clip quickly? Kaduna Crusade. Kaduna, are you ready? Dr. Pastor Paul and Dr. Mrs. Becky Paul Enenche will be storming the city of Kaduna for a healing and deliverance crusade. Tagged the glory of God. The glory of God will saturate the land. Lives and destinies will be liberated. Bodies will be healed and yokes will be destroyed by the power of God. This will be happening at Amadabello Stadium, Kaduna. Date, Thursday 21st to Friday 22nd March 2024. Time, 5pm daily. Free post transportation from designated locations. For inquiries, contact 0907-130-2185 or 0806-959-8469. Come and see the Almighty God at work. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a there is power and there is power. Somebody here get ready because something is about to happen. You are about to walk into a realm of power you have never seen experienced before. I don't know who God sent me to here today, but God is going to give a testimony in your life, around your life, and through your life that will amaze people until people wonder whether this is real. Somebody shout power! Power! We're also visiting the campus in Cardinal State University for uh, a, a Saturday morning meeting for also ministering to the students in Cardinal State generally. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Amen. Please go ahead and, and let's, let's, let's quickly. Sir, you just said one word and enlightened on so many people at once. You mentioned the word G, the name, somebody with the name G, has, have had this breast affliction for about a week now with lumps and pain. What was the name? Great Grace. And she wanted to go and see the gynecologist on Monday. But as you mentioned it right now, she's been trying to locate the lump. No more lump and no more pain. Incredible. What of her? Ha, ha, your name is Grace, Grace too. It's she incredible. said. Incredible. She... And that was the name that I heard. So the name starts with a G, Grace. Yeah. Right. Now she has been urinating blood for a long time right now. And immediately you mentioned that name. She said she felt cold breeze entered her female system. 
and wow. all the pain and everything just is give the lord a praise lift up your hands everyone who came in here this morning every mountain on your life i declare the mountain is dissolved now another g here yes. the media person looking is, 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 is there a professional on that thing there they are praying for people and you are looking somewhere else who is on the mixer please go ahead it's just a non pro totally unprofessional report yourself after this service Sir, another G here. This G is his surname. The G is his surname and has had this arthritis on this left knee. And it happened to his mother. At the same mention of G, every pain disappeared. Give the Lord a praise. It is over forever. Lift up your hands in Jesus' name. Power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Sister had a pain on left shoulder radiating to the left arm. She said she couldn't lift that hand. In fact, she got some drugs to take but she said she will come for service and trust God for healing and God healed that and she pain is totally yes, gone the this other sister said a couple of years ago she went to the village for some things came back to Abuja and then village people followed her to town village. And, yes sir and forced village people followed how village people follow people everywhere even to New York they used to follow people forced her and put a mark inscribed a mark on her head since that time, it became horror for her, as if she was carrying an oversized head. But she said during the worship and wonders night of last month, God visited her and something left that head. But of recent again, she saw a swarm of flies migrating in her direction. From village. From village, apparently. And, and her body became bizarre. It's over. Amen. Lift your hands in Jesus' her. name. Power of the Holy Ghost. Be free. Give the Lord a big clap and a lot of shout of praise in Jesus' precious name. Those of us in the front here, your testimonies are permanent in Jesus' precious name. Is there someone here? All those who are already members of the home church, wave your hands and give the Lord the praise. Already members of the home church, the Lord bless you and the Lord ensure that you don't miss the benefits of being involved in that system in Jesus' name. Anyone who is not yet a member of the home church, in need to be and you should be for the sake of uh, I mean, not, not, not being in the crowd and be lost in the crowd. Lift your hands and let's, let them give you house fellowship form uh, on Saturday evening in your neighborhood. There is a location there near you that you must be belong to. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Mashata. Please give the forms quickly. Those who those who have their homes as home cell location. Can we see your hand also? We use your house as a location. The Lord bless you and the Lord increase and increase you in Jesus name. If you want to give your home as a home cell location, please also lift up your hands and let's acknowledge you. Please give them the forms, get the forms filled and let us hear from you. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. All those, once you fill the forms, either you give them to the usher to assist you, drop it at the glory gate or at the glory gate you see a desk there and you can drop it. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Do we have anything about it? You know, financial stewards? Right. We are not ready for it. Cards to be printed. All right. We'll give you again uh, a, a quick announcement shortly of the Kingdom Financial Towards. Let this be a preparation for it as we have the maiden one for the year and our lives will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Stretch your two hands in front of you and let us honor God with our tithes and offerings. Father, I ask that you multiply the harvest of every giver and let the hands that are stretched out never return back to beg forever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Pick up your offerings, tithes, pledges, all that you want to honor God with. And let us honor God. All those watching online who don't have a dynamics church in your location, there is online foundation class that you can join. Ensure that you are a part of it. Commanding the day midnight prayers is moving like fire. And tonight is a new season. Do we have a testimony? A new season by 11.30 p.m. And then um, we will...
be stepping into something new. Inform your friends, your loved ones. This is a testimony while we get our offerings ready. Mrs. Blessing Ifani Chuku from Port Harcourt. Above all, is truly my place. I want to bless God for connecting me to the command the day right from day one. I am not a member, but I've been consistent sharing link to all my contacts. I've seen the wonders and wondrous testimonies of the God of Dunamis has been doing for people. And I kept saying amen and amen for others, believing that God will soon give me my own testimonies. I've been married for seven years, believing God for babies. And all these years, I don't ovulate. Tests were carried out at, in UPTH, University of Paracourt Teaching Hospital. And the results showed I had hyperthyroidism and hyperprolactinemia. I kept, I kept believing God for my healing and always sing the song, You are the God who can never fail. Ah, in the month of February, all my cases were mentioned by God's servant declaration. Thyroid and hyperprolactinemia were all laid to rest. God healed me. I ovulated in February. I thought it would give the Lord a praise. I thought it was a dream. I said I will wait to see another evidence. And yes, I ovulated again this month of March. Hey! Hallelujah, the God of dynamics healed me. Secondly, husband who used to have asthmatic symptoms to receive his healing through the constant declarations of God's servant concerning chest tightness and asthma. Throughout the month of February till eternity, no more symptoms of asthma. Allah, 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 Allah. We have come to say thank you, Jesus. And we love you, son. Uh, give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Share the links with your friends. And the Lord bless you. Lift up your offerings. Father, bless it. Harvest of every giver. Let the hands lifted never drop to bed forever. In Jesus' name. While the offering is going on, those online details are on the screen. There's someone here. What you need to give to God is your life. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. To become a born again Christian. Not just a church goer, a genuine child of God who knows God. If you are like that, carry your Bible and your bag and step forward here. Please don't go until you are released. Quickly, I'll give you the count of 10 while the music goes on and you rush forward quickly. One, carry your Bibles and your bags and come and surrender your life to Jesus. One, two, If you have an addiction that must be broken, smoking, drinking, womanizing, masturbation, prostitution, lesbianism, gay life, fraud, gambling, lying, cheating, duping, you have something that has tied you down and made it impossible for you to serve God like you should. Stand on your feet and come forward. Keep coming. I can't pay you long. I can't pay you long. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Can we all stand up on our feet? While they come forward, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, step forward and join us as well. You want to become a full member of Dunamis Church, step forward and join us as well. You have been coming, but you are not yet a full member, like the testifier testify. But you want to be a full member now, step forward and join us as well. And finally, you are here for the first time. And you want to identify that today is your first time in Dunamis Church. Also, step forward and let us receive you. After we have said and done that, those in front, place your hand on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Today, I've decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, say amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. In Jesus' name, the yoke is broken.
Man with the neck collar, you are healed. Move your leg. Let's move it left, right. Up. Down. Now take it off. Take. Good. Move it again. Excellent. Excellent. Up. Power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, everyone who came in here with any form of affliction, the same way you are free in the name of Jesus. Counselors will attend to them. You came late for this service, wait for the second service, and you came for the second service, ensure you attend the service you came for. All right, you came with your materials for impartation, lift it high up. I prophesy one more time in the name that is above every name every document you have brought here I declare the power of God release upon the document release upon your certificate release upon what you have come to present before God I declare your answers are released in the name of Jesus anything you are trusting God for by these documents and the things in your hands I declare your answers are released this week is not permitted to end until your answers are released. Go forth in the exploits of faith and return with your testimony in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Shout the Lord and say amen. Under 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, highest under a week, you are testifying. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. 2024 and above only. Where is your place? And above only, God bless you. God bless you. Celebrations. I belong to the body of Christ. I am in. Bless you all in the name of Jesus. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you in Jesus' precious name. Counselors are uh, counselors are behind you. Who are those wearing these crowns? Are those uh, queens from somewhere? Beauty queens of uh, some anthropology. Miss Philanthropy, Miss Philanthropy Africa, Miss um, Philanthropy, Madagascar. Mil, Mil, Philanthropy Madagascar, and Philanthropy where? Africa. Okay. All right, you're all welcome for our philanthropist. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Counselors, please go on ahead and receive them on our behalf and welcome you all in Jesus' precious name. Somebody say a loud amen. God bless you. Counselors, please proceed with them. A chosen generation. It's what I belong to. I thank you, your PC. It's who I am. I have a different breed of person. I am a
You're in for the second service. Clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Lift up your voice this morning. Celebrate the great monarch of Zion. Blessed be God who daily loaded us with benefit. Even the God of our salvation. Lift up your voice. Adonai, we thank you for the benefits of the first service. Thank you for all you did. Thank you for the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the testimonies. Father, thank you for the awe of your presence. Father, we thank you for your hand that rested mightily upon the life of your servant. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the salvation of souls. Lift up your voice this morning and let's invite the presence of God in this second impartation service the Bible is speaking in the book of Psalms and say God is in the midst of our soul she shall not be moved father we ask that you serenade us in this second impartation service permeate us oh Lord overwhelm us with your aura Lord in this service Lord lift up your voice and pray father we ask for your tangible your feelable presence Lord in the name of Jesus the Bible is speaking it says the entrance of a word give it light it give it understanding unto the simple lift up your voice that word oh Lord that will change your life that word that will change our lives father we ask for that word expressing Lord in this service Lord in the name of Jesus we pray second Samuel 15 and in verse 28 David speaking he said I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness and see uh, until your word come and the word come to satisfy me. We are praying this morning, oh Lord, Father, that word of impartation in this impartation service that will sanctify me for a whole new level. That word of impartation, oh Lord, that will shift me to a whole new realm. Father, send it my way, Lord. That word, oh Lord, that will help me to change dimensions. Father, send it my way expressly, Lord, in this service, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And now we're going to be praying for God's servant who was speaking in First Romans. In in the book of Romans chapter 1 and in verse 11 it says, I long to see you that I may impart on you some spiritual gift to the end that he might be established. You're praying, Lord, wire your servant with all manner of spiritual possibilities in this service, Lord. Father, overwhelm him, permeate him, O oh Lord, with our impartation word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Abba. Be thou glorified, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You believe the Lord has said us this morning. Give him a clap offering. And add a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I know you came with testimonies. Please, kindly rush to the glory entrance. The minister is already waiting to invest them. And God bless you. With Jesus' joy, let's receive the praise. Him to take us further in the service. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Can somebody Amen. give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Give a shout of rejoice in the room. Oh, yeah. 
seated in your heavenly places. Hallelujah. Quickly, it is testimony time and would want to have the following come forth for their testimonies. You give Jesus a big hand of praise once more to receive our sister Tricia Edugele. Asuko Basi Samirat Amadobello Oka for Grace Isaac Matthias, Maria Isa, and Asabe Kelly. Asabe Kelly. Asabe Kelly, Maria Isa, Isaac Matthias, Oka for Grace, Samirat Amodobello, Asuko Basi, and Trisha. Edugele. You believe you are next in line for a testimony, your hand clap is the loudest. Give Jesus a hand of praise. Father, we are grateful for this harvest of testimonies as this beloved make their ways forward. Our sister Trisha Edugele. Trisha? Yes. Confirm your name and tell the church what God did for you. Praise the Lord, church. I want to thank God for my life and the life of my family. I want to give him all the glory because he has done exceedingly great in my life. The weight of delay, the embargo of delay and stagnation has been lifted. I graduated two years ago from the university and ever since then I've been having difficulties in getting back my results, my certificate. It took a whole lot of process, going to school, meeting different officials, but all to no avail. Anytime it seems as if it's coming to an end, another thing starts happening. Either they misplace my file or one thing or the other happens. It becomes a frustrating journey. But I want to give God all the glory. In the course of the commanding the day, senior pastor always declares that whatever is, wh whoever holds what belongs to you will be released unto you. And I held on to that word. Anytime it was given, I knew that it, is, it was a word for me. And I held on to it. And I want to return all the glory to God. Going to school... Um, last week, this week's on um, Wednesday. Last week, Wednesday, yes. Last week, Wednesday, I went to school. Normally, when I go to school... She went to school last week, Wednesday, and that certificate was released, and she's come to give God praise for putting an end to that delay. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Everyone that is a victim of delay, delay is over. In Jesus' name. Asukwa, confirm your name and what God did for you. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, my full name is Asukwo Oluwadurotimi Hoganbasi. I want to bring out that name because something happened that led to this testimony. During the commanding the day prayer, 
God's servant mentioned, Mike, he said, somebody who the devil crashed from the top down to the very bottom, God is lifting you back. And on this altar, I gave the testimony, God's servant prayed for me, and he said something. He said, God is lifting you far beyond where you were before, and I held on to that word. Um, for some time, there has been, in my business, there has been a contract I had actually been pursuing. It got to the point where, in, in fact, the person wasn't picking my calls for a long period of time. But we did this period. Last Sunday, God's servant said something. He's doing the message. He said, it is possible, we, when the issue of faith is not in place, it is possible for someone who is blessed to look like he's not blessed. And that word struck me. It hit me because it was like that was my story. And I started wondering, do I really understand this issue of faith? And it changed how I was looking at the contract and everything like that. And um, on, let me cut it short. I started looking at it differently. After some time, the man will call. And when he talks, the talk may not be 100%. It will not be really convenient. But I still kept on praying. It got to a point, it wasn't picking calls. I was just sending messages. God just let me do this, do this. I would send messages. So Praise God. On Wednesday, after uh, the uh, Wednesday Bible study, that's the Wednesday meeting, God's servant said, we should, on the basis of faith, we should take one, ask for one particular thing that we want God to do for us. And I said, Father, please help me conclude this the way it would make sense. And as I got home that same night, I just felt like, okay, fine. Let me send another message. I sent a text message. The message was so funny. It was like, well, he sent another message. We'll have to summarize it. All right. So, and this time around, it was unlike previous experiences. The man or black contract has been approved in multiple zeros and true to type. God is raising him back beyond where he used to be, and he has come to give God praise. Celebrate Jesus again. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Anywhere the devil dropped you to, you are rising up back to your relevance in Jesus' name. Samirat, you'd confirm your name and tell the church what God did for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Amadou Samira Bello. I was born a Muslim. I gave my life to Christ in October 2022. This, this decision was met with opposition, persecution from my friends and family. Nobody really understood what made me make this decision. And one of my uncle would say that this would be the worst decision I ever made in my life. I'm here to give God all the praise because it has not been the worst decision I've made. Hey! This is indeed the best decision I've made in my life. I'm here to give God glory for passing my biofinals. I'm now a lawyer. This, this qualifying exam that made me a lawyer, my dad, who was a lawyer before he died, wrote it two times. My mom, who is currently a lawyer now, wrote it three times. And every time she wrote it, they say one score, your script is missing despite her intelligence. And when I got into faith, I realized it was a satanic oppression, limitation, and I prayed towards it. And God made me write that exam once with a 2.1 grade, which is BB in all my five courses. I'm here to give all God all the glory for everything he has done for me. Praise God. Somebody you believe you are breaking also a pattern. Give Jesus a big a clap and a lot of shout of praise. Bigger, bigger clap and a lot of shout of praise. Your name and what God did for you. Church, praise the Lord. I want to glorify the name of God for he has been so faithful in my life. Despite the challenges, the negative Sons was so ever it has been terrible in my life in my family in fact i don't know how we have to start i don't even know i can't even fight the situation around my family but but yesterday night there is something marvelous that god did for me but in fact after the midnight prayer after the commanding the day yesterday i i, I went about I, I brought out messages from daddy Judgment sapphire, fear of God. I, the, the last one is matter of grace and dissolving the mysteries. In fact, after that messages, I had dissolving me. I said, 
if God can do this for everybody, why my case is different? I was so kind in the, in the midnight yesterday. God revealed this mystery and dissolved it. I don't care to know the kind of mystery. Behold, at the end of the day, I'm on four. I just went to sleep. I don't even know how I just slept. But what I saw is my daddy was calling me. I picked that phone, answering that call. Immediately that daddy wants to say, there is a woman immediately away from nowhere, a distraction wind in the room that I am. It was like dropping things like a spirit. I was like forced to move out from that room. Immediately I found myself in a, in a lost side like that. Everywhere is noise. I couldn't hear daddy again. I don't know what to do. And men, we are following me to even scatter the Hold on. You need to calm down so that we understand it properly. Like she said, God's servant put a call across to her. In that encounter, she saw it on her phone. And while she picked to talk to him, a wild wind just came around her and began to scatter things. She couldn't hear him anymore. So it, 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 she was cut off completely from that connection. Now, afterwards, the encounter continued and you saw yourself in its church setting. All right, so what happened in the church setting? Church, I was sitting at the second seat where daddy we are standing because daddy is about to preach and daddy said to me are you not the grace that I called last night I say yes sir. I am the grace say come out how we pray for you as I immediately I came out I was like uh, the ushers we are we are guiding me immediately daddy say are you with all you I say no I'm not with all you daddy uses all you immediately daddy started praying I begin to manifest in fact I was crying to the extent that I wake up shivering I did I couldn't even understand. I was manifesting fire all around my body. And she came all the way from Dunamis Orozo, you said, uh, Aso. Aso, to come and share this testimony and encounter, knowing fully well that that was a tangible deliverance that had happened to her. Everything before now, that wild wind had blown away, including her marriage. But today, God has turned everything around and she's giving God praise. Trust. The encounter is permanent in the name of Jesus. All the way from the United States of Asu, another USA. In the name of Jesus, you are free in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Your name and what God did for you. I'm Isaac Matthias from Massacre, Jankangwa. I started a school 213. And the school was doing well for three years. But after three years, it was a struggle. So I was about to shut down the school last year, December. But when I prayed, because it's God that told me to start the school, I was waiting to hear that God should say I should quit. But I have not heard God. But I made conclusion because of the struggle. And I'm trying to shut down the school. December, when I was making conclusion to tell my parents that I should look for other school, I saw, I say, it's a crusade. And it's our mommy that was there, our mommy Becky, Dr. Becky and Enche. And then she, she called me out and she prayed for me. I fell under the anointing and she told me that I should not shut down the school, that, that the power from my mother's house is what is fighting me. And so now I come all the way from massacre begging mommy and daddy that she should lay their hands on me so that I can deliver me. In Jesus' name. That was not what we talked about. That was uh, a tested uh, prayer. That tested prayer. Anyway, what he told me at the, <laughs> at the back was that after that encounter, he decided not to um, proceed with his decision of shutting down the school. And as we speak, um, fresh pupils have come in and are admitted. Uh, he had also been able to employ more staff and teachers, and the school is growing. And he wants to give God praise for that. But the aspect of laying hands... He has, has packaged uh, well, prayer through testimony. <laughs> It's a testy prayer. That was why I looked at him strangely, sir. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, and the school will continue to grow. Where's the request? Jesus, precious name, we turn around in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, your name and what God did for, for you. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Ah, I want 
to thank God Almighty. My name is Sister Maria Aisha. I want to thank mommy and daddy to answer this call. Then I lost my brother four years ago. But before he gave up for Wawalada Hospital, she told me that he can't make it again. He said, these children, I should take to Donamis. If I don't take to Donamis to worship for Donamis, they will finish all of them. I said, okay, I hear you. So that time, by then, I then Lagos. I lost my husband. Well, um, before the demise of the brother, like she said, he handed over these children to her. Take care of these children. Ensure you take these children to Dunamis or else I will lose them. I don't know what he saw before then, but that, those were his last words. And he passed eventually. And she said, in the process of time, the children began to have one demonic encounter after another. Where was the one that was healed of diabetes? Yes. It was on this mountain that God healed him. My goodness, you need to see what is happening here. Camera. As young as this young boy, this is, these are the drugs they had to administer or give to him to contain his diabetic condition. But God healed him on this altar. Secondly, the other one was trying to bait. Which one was trying to bait? And a strange hand from nowhere lifted up that boy, hit him on the ground, dislocated that ankle, uh, that elbow. The, the man who was attending to this thing, to that hand, died mysteriously. Another one again. Which one? Stomach pain, mysterious stomach pain. Nothing could be found. But when they came for a service here, declarations were made. He rushed, went to the toilet to throw up. As he was throwing up, according to her, that smoke was coming out from his mouth. The devil was out to destroy these children and destroy his destiny. But God has preserved them. She has come to say... Oh, she said yesterday, this one collapsed. That other one collapsed. This one with green. Collapsed and then he was lifeless. She reached out for the bottle of anointing oil and communion materials blessed on this altar and administered. In fact, he was, he was gone. While they were praying, a spirit began to speak from, um, through him that you cannot deliver. Shut up your mouth, you cannot deliver. But in summary, God is faithful. And the devil is never a match for the power of God. And she has come to testify to that this morning. And also dedicating them or rededicating them on this altar. That God who had begun will continue to preserve them. And congratulations, they are preserved. The father knew what he saw. The force that killed him was bent on finishing his generation. And he said, take these children to Dunamis. Otherwise, I will lose all of them. But upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance and there is holiness. Stand up on your feet, people, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Every force from hell that want to wipe out your generation. Every altar of darkness that is positioned to waste your family, to waste your own life, and the altar from where the wastage of these children are coming from, or, or rather, attempted wastage, the altar that killed their father and the high priests and the agents of hell insisting on finishing these children. Today I declare their expiry date. We shall be hearing of their death one by one by one. That conspiracy of darkness is broken and arrested. And I declare the children are free. In Jesus' name. Children, stand up. Go to that altar up there. Just lie down flat. Face the altar. That's right. Just hand over yourself to God there. Father, thank you for these children. We commit them into your hands. Their life now. Their future. Their growing up. Their marital destiny. Their career. Everything about them. We declare their security. Their protection their preservation, 
upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance, there is holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Any devil looking for them is now looking for death. From this day forward, any altar looking for them is looking for death, looking for destruction. In the name of Jesus, and everyone here today, every devil that is looking for you, looking for your life, and looking for your children, they are looking for death and destruction. Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. And everyone who is a victim of, of, of diabetes, victim of any form of enemy arrow, the arrow is retrieved or refired back to hell. Give the Lord a shout of praise as you take your seat. Celebration. Yes, your name and what God did for you. My name is Asube Kelly. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank God for his mercy and I want to thank Daddy for standing in the gap for us. I joined this commission last year. August being invited by my friend. So when I came here, I, I was having some expectations. One of the expectations with, is my senior ones. They have not married. I was the only one out of eight married. And the only one married legally. Everybody else had an arrangement between a man and a woman and stuff like that. And she said it was what she trusted God for, not just even her direct siblings, even her aunts had that limitation. But upon this mountain, the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. God visited her. She said her elder brother, who was plagued by the same anti spell, got married in December last year, just a couple of months after her connection with this mantle. And her, one of her sisters also will be marrying by next month in April, which is obvious that God has shattered that um, limitation. And then she said she also came, and her auntie too. She also just added that her aunt is also getting married. Now she said when she came, she was also plagued with financial um, stagnation. She said last Sunday, I, I guess, while she was praying after the service, that someone just came to her and tapped her and said, Madam, what is your challenge? Before she would say anything, she told him anyways that she had some accommodation challenge and the person said, send me your account details. She got home and the person wired monies in excess of what she needed to handle her, her accommodation. She isn't taking that for granted. Also, her husband had been stranded because of um, lack of job, husband had relocated to the village while they are managing somewhere here. But God also provided a job for husband. Just in the space of a couple of months, husband has gotten a job in Kano, and God has just overhauled this family, and she has come to give God praise. Celebrate God with a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big clap and a lot of shout of praise. God is changing your story. Say a loud amen. Let's give Jesus a big clap and a shout of praise. If God is changing your story, say a loud amen. 
Help me welcome your neighbor on the left and on the right with a warm handshake and tell them, welcome to God's presence. Today is the day you've been waiting for. God is set for your lifting in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're excited at what God is doing in our midst. I want to thank God for the amazing testimonies that we hear in the house here day in, day out. Without a doubt, your testimony shall be the very next in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, our Seeds of Destiny, I'd like to encourage us to read all of it when we get back home. But by way of summary, we understand that there's something called evil money. These are proceeds of iniquity in whatever form, corrupt money, money from bribery, money from all manner of things. This God's servant has classified as evil money. And in today's write-up, he talks about money from prostitution. And he describes prostitution in his words. There can be wholesale prostitution and retail prostitution. Wholesale and retail. In terms of whether the ladies go and, uh, you know, live in a brothel and uh, they are servicing many, 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 many men as the case may be, or they own their own house and the men come there on call duty roster. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is, such money amounts to no good and such money is evil money. The, uh, read all of it when you get back home and I know you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Also, we want to welcome... Um, Many, many, many people that have come from all around the world, all around uh, Abuja and its environs, we welcome you and we believe you are not living here the same. This morning we have people from 14 nations that are here worshipping with us. Some of them are here to be here from now till the uh, resurrection Sunday morning service, the worship and wonders night and the uh, um, services in this period. People from Cameroon, Cuba, France, Germany, Ghana, Ireland, Rwanda, Sweden, Botswana, Madagascar. Wow. That's uh, uh, Madagascar's here. United Kingdom, the United States of America, Zimbabwe, and from the Netherlands. Let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The earth is being covered with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Praise the Lord. The midnight, uh, commanding the day midnight prayer is really, really um, affecting our world and positive impact on people. Uh, encourage your friends and your loved ones to be part of it. And some people say, oh, I didn't know how to get the link. I don't know how to send the link out. Just go and subscribe to Dunamis TV YouTube channel. And then you would get the notification of when the prayer starts and when it begins. You can also subscribe to all our other touch points, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche, Dr. Becky Enenche, Dunamis TV, and all that on all the social media platforms, and you'll be blessed. Let's give Jesus a big clap of hand here today. As you receive the ministry of the Asaphites, the Youth Chapel Choir, There'll be ministry and medley of songs. These are all songs received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. As a singer and minister, I believe you'll be blessed. Let's receive them with a clap offering.
Because knowing you is what my heart desires. Knowing you is what I want to do. Knowing you is what my heart desires. Me shabba da 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 da. No. Is what I want to do. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name for the privilege of closeness, privilege of association, privilege of knowing you. Father, we ask that you breathe upon this word today. Let not one person live here this way they have come. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a praise and shake three hands and welcome them to the presence. Lord, I want to know you more, more than anything on earth. Lead me by the hand, O oh Lord, to your secret place, O oh Lord. Lord, I want to know you more, more than anything on earth. Lead me by the hand. Oh Lord, to your holy secret place, Lord, I want to know you more, more than anything on earth. Lead me by the hand, oh Lord, to your holy secret place, Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you more But that's more than anything on earth Lead me by the hand, oh Lord To your holy sea, too More than any wisdom, Lord more than art of science, Lord. More than fact or fiction, Lord. Lord, I want to know you more. Hey! More than any wisdom, Lord. More than art of science, Lord. More than fact or fiction, Lord. Lord, I want to know you more. More than anyone I know, more than anything I know, more than anywhere I know, Lord, I want to know you more, more than anyone I know, more than any subject I know, more than any place I have been. Lord, I want to know you more. Knowing you is what my heart 
بزنم نامه دیم بزنم He's what my heart is now. I just go ahead and thank him. He's drawing people close to himself today. Drawing people close in intimacy. Receive the grace for intimacy. Paul the Apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Grace to know him like never before is released. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. This word I have. First Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 9. Unraveling the mystery of faith. Part 3. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. I welcome everyone here today. Everyone who have come from all around the world. 14 countries today. People watching from all over the world. You will never remain the same in Jesus' name. We started this subject from midweek service of Wednesday. And we began to look at the fact that faith to most people is a very, very serious mystery. But we said that faith is both understandable And operable can be operated. And we began to look, all right, as our objective first was to understand the mystery of faith, understand the profit of faith, and understand the way that leads to faith or that lead to faith. Now, we started, we looked at three things that define faith. In the Wednesday service, three in the midweek service. And so we're going to start from the beginning. We said that faith is a combination of word revelation, heart conviction, the right declaration, and the right action. You have the revelation of the word. You have a conviction in your heart from the word you got led you to declare the correct things and you put forth the right action. You do what you are meant to do and the outcome 
is right. It will produce the right outcome. That was first. Number two, we said that faith is carrying out required word-based responsibility. What the word of God expects you to do. You carry them out so you can experience desired word-based possibility. This is the responsibility I must accept if this is the possibility I must experience. Carrying out required word-based responsibility in order to experience required word-based possibility. Number three, please, if I'm too fast, just go to the YouTube to watch it over or get the CD. Thirdly, faith is laying hold on the reality reliability and trustability of God. That is, God is real. He is reliable and he can be trusted. You lay hold on that so you can see the possibilities of God. We looked at those three in the midweek service. That was number three. And now in the first service we went further to number four that says faith is seen Beyond the visible realities of the natural world. That is the things you can see around you. You are seeing beyond it. You are seeing poverty around you. You are seeing beyond it. You are seeing medical diagnosis around you. You are seeing beyond it. Seeing beyond the visible realities of the natural world. Into the invisible realities of the spiritual world. Bringing forth supernatural manifestation. In the spiritual world, he says by his stripes you are healed. In the natural world, they say there is diabetes. So you are looking beyond the diabetes and looking at by his stripes you are healed. So that you can see supernatural manifestation. Seeing beyond the visible realities of the natural world into the invisible realities of the spiritual world so as to bring forth supernatural manifestations. Number five, also in the second service, at the first service, we said that faith is coming into agreement with the Almighty for the fulfillment of his commitment. Coming into agreement. God said it, you agreed. You said, yes, sir. What is said for you to do, you did them. And the outcome is he fulfilling his commitment. Coming into agreement with the Almighty for the fulfillment of his commitment. Agreeing with God is what is called belief. I believe in God means I agree with him. And six, faith is walking the word to dominate your world. You walk the word to dominate your world. You carry the word of God. You walk it. We looked at all of that in the last service. Now we are going to proceed. This will take us to point number six, I believe. Number seven. Faith, this is very important. Faith is a spiritual sense. That is sharpened. Spiritual sense. Sharpened or strengthened by the light of God's word. that functions beyond and contrary to the natural senses. Say that again. Faith is a spiritual sense. 
That is sharpened or strengthened by the light of God's word and functions beyond and contrary to the natural senses. What is the meaning of this? I want to, if you understand it, it's very, very sweet. It's very, very interesting. It's a spiritual sense that is sharpened or strengthened by the light of God's word and functions beyond and contrary to the natural senses. Let me ask you a question. All right. Before we go, let's look at 2 Corinthians 5 and in verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and in verse 7. He said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So sight is a sense and faith is another sense. Second Corinthians 2 and in verse 9 to 10. For to this end also did I write. All right, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him, I couldn't see. Ear is beyond eye, is beyond ear. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Somebody say a loud amen. We, did, we have, how many senses do we have? Natural senses. How many? Please, I want us to be in the classroom. Is a sense of what? Smell, sight, sound, hearing, taste, and touch. Right? Sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. There are five senses. Most of us, our senses are different. My wife's Smell sense is on another level. If she steps in here, whatever you haven't perceived, she has perceived it. My seeing and hearing, that's physically. I can sight somebody on the gallery and be able to probably tell what he's wearing, whether he's sitting or standing. And, and they are talking in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the bedroom, bedroom or the, and I'm on the ground floor. I just picked up something and said, and I'll join them and continue the conversation. So how did you hear? So people have different development of senses. Even the sense of touch, which communicates pain. You just hold somebody here and it's not feeling it, but you hold another person is feeling it. We develop those senses at different levels. Can I ask you a question? Everything you see, can you smell it? Everything you smell, can you hear it? All right. We have five senses in the physical. We have one sense in the spiritual. It is called faith. So there are things that may not make sense, but they can make faith. You, you are at the frequency of faith where you begin to walk in the realm of things that may not make natural sense but they make spiritual sense it is called faith when you are addicted and tied down by your natural senses you may not be able to walk in faith and the sense of faith, which is more like a sixth sense, is sharpened by the word of God. Is strengthened by the word of God. I give you two examples. Luke chapter 17, verse 12, all the way to verse 14. And as he entered 
into a certain village. They are met him ten men that were lepers. We stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed down. That chapter, verse 14, does not make sense. In the Old Testament, you ask a leper that is already cleansed to go and meet the priest so the priest can confirm that he is cleansed. Then he will offer turtle doves and sacrifices for the cleansing to confirm that the leper is truly cleansed before he can return back into the public to mix with people. Now Jesus was telling lepers that had leprosy in their bodies to go show themselves to the priest with the leprosy on their body. The question is, what are you saying? Are you, have you lost your mind, sir? As a leper, I am not even meant to mix with people. They have a bell on their body ringing unclean, unclean, unclean. So that anywhere they are coming, people are running away. But they understood that this was not an instruction for the senses. It was an instruction for faith. Jesus was not appealing to their physical senses. He was appealing to their faith. Go and show yourself to the priest means, even though the leprosy is on your body, I consider you healed. When he said, go and show yourself to the priest, leprosy was still on their bodies. But as they went, they were cleansed. Ay, 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 ay. That instruction didn't make sense, but it made faith. If you are going to walk, live the life of faith, you, should, you would come to the point where you humble your senses. At times, humiliate your senses. At times, at times, relegate your senses. Put them where they belong. And you move. That was why he said, we walk by faith, not by sight. So it is not only sight you use to move. You also use faith to move. <laughs> Woo! When the foundation of this house was laid, the money to build it was not on ground. That's right. That is money that will start it and finish it was not on ground. Supposing you are hooked on the road. No, it's not possible. Somebody say loud amen. Listen, don't forget. It is not only sight you used to move. It's not only hearing you used to move. You use faith to move. I will give you an example. In John chapter 9 verse 6, take your seat. As Jesus passed by, let's start a little bit from an earlier verse. As long as I'm in the world, I'm in the light, I'm the light of the world. Okay, the man that was born blind. Start from verse 1 for a greater understanding. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither have this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So go to verse 5. I must walk the works of him. That send me while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can walk. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. And made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man. That is, he blinded him the more. With the clay. This is what is most important. And he said to him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Which is by interpretation, sent. 
He went his way, therefore, and washed and came. Say, see this. Telling a blind man to go and wash and come. If I can move by myself and, and, and walk, will I need to come to you for prayer? Pool of Siloam is connected to an underground tunnel. They call it a Taroponian tunnel. Conduit con manufactured by King Hezekiah. The pool has 38 winding staircases. Walk like that, winding to enter the pool. That is what he is telling the blind man to go and do. And there was no documentation that anybody led him. So the man moved before he saw. He started walking before he started seeing. So he did not move by sight. He moved by faith. So even when your sight and your senses and your resources cannot carry you, your faith can carry you. Hey! Hey! If God is speaking to somebody here, shout the Lord and say amen. Shout the Lord and say amen. All the crusades we organized. We don't take offering at the crusade ground. Yet we organize the crusades without consulting not man, not pocket, not anything. And without standing to beg for the money to go. Listen. If the time comes when we begin to beg and say, help us for this crusade. If you don't help us, we cannot go. That is the end of the crusade. It won't hold. Because God has never called us to beg on his behalf. I heard of a crusade very, 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 very touching. Two days crusade, no altar call. Crowds jammed. That's not what is worst. Pastors and ministers gathered for a minister's conference. And then the person involved is now talking about how much money. I mean, that we need money for this, we need money for that. One of the people there said, how much money is the total bill you are looking for, sir? I will pay it. Please, can you give us impartation? Still, that is not shy. I won't go beyond this. I remember when I married newly, I went to preach somewhere. And after I finished preaching, Powerful message. Somebody came and was trying to, you know, the donation we talked about, the contribution. I came up and said, you know what? The message I just preached, I want the people to go and think about it. Don't spoil it with this, what you're saying. How much would you want everybody to donate? Tell me, me and my wife will pay it. I wasn't a pastor at that time. We paid it. Leave the people to go and think about what they just heard. How can you plan crusade for September in Angola? Plan crusade for Malawi and all these places and you are not going to take offering there and you are not putting the church under pressure to give money for this crusade because the sender is big enough to supply and the day if the day comes when he can no longer supply that is the end of the assignment it is proof positive that the assignment is over the way I told him in Port Harcourt this is the first crusade of the year. This is setting the pace for all other crusades. If they rain, one drop fall. One. That is, somebody felt a shower. I conclude that to say we shouldn't hold crusade this year. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, you can move just by faith without anything else. If you sharpen your sense of faith, you can move even without any other sense. 
Do you know if I stop here, I've already preached. If I stop here, so your assignment is just keep sharpening your faith, strengthen your faith with the word. So your faithometer. <laughs> We'll just be reading maximum all the time. You can dear things. People are afraid for you, but you are not afraid for yourself because there is something that is moving you. It is not what you are seeing. It's not what you are hearing. It's not what you are feeling. It is your faith. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Lift your right and say, Father. I receive the grace to develop the sense of faith, the sixth sense. I receive that grace to develop it. Now, in Jesus' name, give the Lord a praise and take your seat. People who are slaves of the senses are strangers to faith. Slaves of the senses. He must touch it to be sure. He must feel it to be sure. Sometime my wife touched my, my body one time, once or twice. You see, the body is so warm. I say, I'm a warm blooded animal. I'm a warm blooded personality. I'm not cold blooded. Then one day I, one day I told her, See, the body is warm. See, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. And I said, if you ever touch it and it is cold, wouldn't you be, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be a, wouldn't that be a challenge? <laughs> Normal temperature, I'm on fire. That is, I refuse to say I have fever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your eyes are so red. Yes, it's very normal. The eyes of a lion are normally red. That's the normal eyes of lion. <laughs> hey! Hey! Somebody give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. And all those times without exception, the body does adjust, adjust itself. Adjust normally. Somebody say amen. If you become a slave of the senses, you become a stranger to faith. I'm not saying that you should do act when action is necessary. But understand that faith will make you do what your senses will not ask you to do. That was number six. Number seven. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was number seven. Right? So let's go to number eight. Faith is taking scriptural steps. In bracket, contrary to natural facts. In order to experience supernatural proofs. Say that again. Faith is taking scriptural steps. The points are all linked. In one way or the other. It's taking scriptural steps that may be contrary to natural facts. In order to experience supernatural proofs. That was what the Bible said in 2 Thessalonians, making us to know that faith is a work. 2 Thessalonians 1.11, he said, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God will count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, 
and the work of faith with power. The work of faith with power. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.3 He said Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Your work of faith and labor of love. Your work of faith and labor of love. Work. So faith is a work. We take the steps that may be contrary to the facts and to experience supernatural proofs. Somebody say amen. Faith is a work to do. It's a responsibility to accept. Look at two examples. Taking scriptural steps. Exodus chapter 14. There was a Red Sea that they could not cross. And God has, was asking Moses to stretch his rod. Rod, Red Sea, how? But he took the step. In Exodus 14, 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. That is, Moses, lift your rod. He took the step. And God produced the proof. He sent the, the wind and divided the Red Sea. In the journey of faith, you do what you can do. Then God does what you can't do. Hello? Say that again. In the journey, in the adventure of faith, man does what he can. And God does what man can't. You do what you can do in order for God to do what you can't do. You can't heal yourself. But he said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So, what you do is to be merry. And ensure that everybody around you is merry. Just make people happy. The other day, I was telling my children, why is it that anything I see, people will be laughing? He said, it's because of the kind of things you say. I heard that two people conducted the census of the funniest person in the house. And I won the, 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 the competition. Hallelujah. You do what you can. So you can't heal yourself, but you can be excited. So be merry. Let God so, so God can supply you health. Refuse to be depressed so that you are not oppressed. In the same manner, apply the equation to every you can't supply yourself. All your needs. But God can supply you all your needs. So once and again, you give. Philippians 4.15 um, He said, No church has communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Once and again in Thessalonica, you sent to my necessity. Then verse 19, my God shall supply your needs. So you do the things you can do, and then God will do the things you can't do. Another example is Ezekiel 37 verse 7. In the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel prophesied as he was commanded. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. Ezekiel could not bring the bones together, but Ezekiel could prophesy. Ezekiel could speak what he was commanded to speak. And as he did so, God did what Ezekiel couldn't do. Faith is taking supernatural steps. That are contrary to natural facts in order to experience supernatural proofs taking scriptural steps to experience supernatural proofs and finally number nine I like i like you to take note of these these i received i heard from the from god's servant bishop david Yuriko. it is a little bit paraphrased and here it is that faith is drawing spiritual virtue. Drawing spiritual virtue from the living word of the living God 
to produce living proofs. Faith is drawing spiritual virtue from the living word. This is our point number nine. It's not just a quote. Drawing spiritual virtue from the living word of the living God to produce living proofs. If you want, you can put Bishop David Hedeko paraphrased. From the living God, drawing spiritual virtue from the living word of the living God to produce living proofs. The word of God is alive. When you draw that virtue from the word that is alive, God is alive, his word is alive. You see proofs that are living. Proofs that are living. Proofs that nobody can deny. Look at John chapter 6 verse 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, the word carries life. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. He said, where the word of a king is, there is power. The word carries power also. And then Romans chapter 10 and in verse 8, he said, but what said it? The word is near you, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. At creation, we saw virtue. Virtue is miracle power. We saw virtue or miracle power as the force of creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to verse 5, he said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the water, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. At creation, what God said became the force that created things. You look at the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, verse 25. All the way to verse 30. Jesus is the, is the word. Word alive. If I can encounter the word. I shall be whole. And she touched. And something happened. Now let me tell you. How do you draw virtue. From the word. Two ways. Number one. By revelation. By trusting God to show you out of the Bible. What you haven't seen before. You draw virtue by revelation. I'll, I'll give you a practical example. And number two, by action. You draw, you connect power. This is practical example. I sat in the Rewan church, the office on the floor of the media office. I'm sure you remember that office. And I was studying the Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Revelation is God causing you to hear the word in an understandable way that will cause faith to explode. So this passage, this was what I, how I heard it. Anything that cannot say no to me, cannot say no to you. That was how I heard it. Anything that will hear me, will hear you. The only thing that will not hear you, is the thing that will not hear me. That, that was the first thing I heard from that passage. Do you know the second one I heard? It, that one blew my mind. Every 
everything hearing you is hearing my voice inside your voice. That is, my voice is inside your voice. He that heareth you, heareth me. As you are talking, they are hearing me in you. Hello. It blew my mind. So I sat down boiling. Impossible like this. Easy like this. While I was thinking of what to do, my attention was called outside. That there is a young man, there was a young man, the only son of his mother was running mad. They have chained his hand and locked it with four padlocks. About four men were holding him and they couldn't control him. And I walked with that light. Just now, I drew virtue. I drew power from word based on light. What is happening? The woman was crying. He is my only son and he is mad. The first thing I said to them is, leave him. They were holding him. They looked at each other like, leave who? The person that is with chain is violent. They were not ready for what they had next. They left him. Then I said, lose him. Huh? It didn't make sense. How will it make sense? You have not even prayed for him. To say, okay, be healed at least. Directly lose him like that on the basis of what? They were looking at each other. And I could almost read their mind. He himself is here too. If we say we should lose him, and anything that is happening can happen to all of us. They lose the key. One, two, three, four. Unwound the chain. While they were losing, the hand was bleeding. As soon as they lose him, he adjusted his cloth like this. I said, sorry. He said, thank you, sir. <laughs> wow. Like a gentleman. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Kneel down. Yes, sir. He was on his knees. I led him to Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Sinner. I can't be mad. I can't be mad. And I said, Satan, you know you are out and return back no more in Jesus' name. Mother, your son, bye. The whole commando operation did not last more than five minutes. Listen. The boy followed his mother home as a gentleman. Our pastor, who is now in Lagos, this is 20 something years ago. They were all still at the base. He followed me running. He said, Excuse me, sir. What just happened? What just happened? You didn't pray for the man. You didn't even say anything. You said, Leave him, lose him. I said, I just saw something. That devil came at the wrong time. I was boiling with a demon busting revelation. Hey! If that devil had come one hour earlier or the day previous, the action would have been different. The operation may have been different. But I just saw something that told me the devil that cannot say no to me cannot say no to you. And then my voice is inside your voice. So when I say leave him, the devil held Jesus. When I say lose him, that devil held him again. That revelation and the action pulled the virtue. It just released the unction. Any area where you get insight in that area, you will get virtue. Am I communicating? You will get spiritual electricity. At times you will be behaving. People are wondering what is driving this man. You saw what others didn't see. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Do you know the way I heard it? 
the weapon that can prosper against you will not be manufactured. If it, was, if it has been manufactured, it cannot prosper. And if it will prosper, it cannot be manufactured. Hallelujah. That is drawing spiritual virtue from the living word of the living God to produce living proofs. Lift your hands and say after me, say, Father, open my eyes to see from your word what I have not seen before. Open my eyes to see from your word what I have not seen before. I receive that grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very quickly, as we rather, please take your seat. Incredible. What is a prophet of faith? We enumerated all of them. Is that right? Go ahead and pick it up from the first from Wednesday. Number one, faith is the secret of victory in life's battles. It's all the same. The secret of victory in life's battles. You fight by faith, you win by faith. Number two, Faith is the secret of supernatural power. Which is needed for exploits and resources. Supernatural power. Supernatural power. Philip was filled with faith and power. And he did many miracles. Wonder Stephen was full of faith and power. Did many miracles. Faith, that's Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Number 3, faith is the secret of possibilities. All things are possible to him that believes. If it will be possible, it takes faith. You know what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says? Without faith, it is impossible. You know, you can stop there and it makes sense. It is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible. Not just impossible to please God, impossible in every realm. Number four, faith is the secret of possessing our possessions. There are many things that are yours in God. You take them by faith. It's the secret of possessing our possessions. Number five, faith is the secret of evidence. Good report, testimony, evidence, good report, testimonies. I, I will add one more scripture to that in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. That is, evidential Christianity is based on faith. By faith, Enoch was translated that he will not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. He pleased God. Testimony, testimony. On this altar, we hear a lot of testimonies all the time. Products of faith. Number six, faith is the secret of escape from danger and disaster. Danger and disaster. You read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33 and 34. He told us of men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword through faith. You will not die before your time. If you are saying amen, say loud amen. You cannot be cautious before your time. And finally, number seven, faith is the secret of exploits. Secret of exploits. To command results that command attention, it takes faith. To command results that command attention, it requires faith. Now, what is the way of faith? One, know the Lord. The people that do know their God. Now, this came out of Wednesday midweek service. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Just, just know God. The more of God you know, the easier it is to believe him. Know the Lord. Number two, know the word. Faith cometh 
by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Anything that is not based on the word is not faith. And beware of any teaching that makes you to doubt the immutability, the authenticity, the veracity of all of the Bible. All. All. We'll deal on that matter another day. Any attack on the word is an attack on your faith. It is casting a doubt on what you should believe. Know the word. Know the word. Know the word. In and out. The final faith is compulsory to make the most of your life on the earth. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 said, without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is compulsory to make the most of your life on the earth. Faith is compulsory. Number two, we did that already but just to completion, the knowledge of God and of his word are critical to the life of faith. The knowledge of God, the knowledge of his word are critical. They are essential to the life of faith. Don't toy with God with his word. It's a new day. Is anybody blessed here at all? Is there somebody your faith has been fired to another level? Stand on your, fa on your feet to the loud shout of praise. We're going to have a few minutes of prayer after that take one or two testimonies and then impartation and we are true and we are maho shate kele vere nagagayala appreciate it thank you Adam. thank you Adam. lift your hands high we're going to pray the three prayers we prayed in the first service see after me say father father thank you thank you for your word, for your word to me to me today, today. I, ask, I ask oh lord oh lord for a fresh baptism, for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Again, Father. <laughs> In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Secondly, say, Father, Father, help me to know you, me to that I may know you, and the power, and the power of you. Maha Shadido, Leke Spirit in Asia, Jekotalini me garagadosalo, La Spirit to Kezugada Galanasa, La Kassofre Tizoli, Lori Kassanari, Korantese, Nomalo Garosa, Yara Kasseteli Gadana. Finally, lift your voice and say, Father, Father open my eyes. To behold, to behold wonders, wonders out of your world. Open, open my eyes to see wondrous things out of your book. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fire up my faith by light and insight from your word, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Go Let us see the God. Let us see the let the sinana de la garage. Let the sea that I Jesus precious. This afternoon, there is the release of there is the arrest of the there is the arrest of the wild wind Amen. of disaster and this lift your hands high.
Lift up your hands and where you are, your name. What is your possession that the enemy is trying to divert from you is being released finally now. That wild wind and that storm that the devil is planning to stare, stare around your life is returned back to hell. And this moment, your faith will produce rest. Be retrieved and refired back to hell. Lower abdominal condition that you are healing right now. Release upon your people what is theirs that the devil has held back. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. I receive. 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 I declare it is done. I declare it is done. I declare it is done. A new day and a new season is upon you. That lower back condition is arrested. Master Kokola Galaba. Lady with a name that starts with a T with a growth in your body and a pain. Name starts with a T. I declare that pain and that growth is melted right now. The affliction is gone to hell. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big clap of celebration. If God has touched you and something happened to you, quickly rush to the front chair while the rest of us take our seats. Oh, Lua, Celebrate. Somebody's running out. Etobio, 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 I take authority over that demonic arrow on that left breast. I don't know who it is, but it came as an arrow of very sharp piercing, needle-like, penetrating pain. Whether it has a tumor, a growth in it, I don't care, but it's a, it's a demonic life. I declare that arrow is retrieved on the left breast. Return back to hell in the name of Jesus. Confirm your healing and step forward here in Jesus. Complete the song. No, from where you stop? Cosenita. You are laughing.
laughing when I say it should continue. That's how my mind works many times. Because that means that the song stopped halfway. And we cannot account for the rest of the song. <laughs> when I am in, in the plane or traveling and they serve me a glass of water, this is between me and you don't tell anybody. <laughs> if I drank halfway and they want to fill it, I said, no, let me finish this one first so I can account for this cup. <laughs> Hallelujah! Give the Lord a big clap. So, learning from this moment, every time you are singing a song and we stop in the middle, when you are starting, start from where it stopped. So we don't lose half of it. <laughs> Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Well, we are getting the lineup for the testimonies. Quickly, two things I want to draw your attention to. We have a ma massive welfare program that is going on. Um, I mentioned it during the workforce meeting. How many of you remember? The workforce meeting of March, the first Saturday of March, and then we did skeletally in the first Sunday, and then the last Sunday, massively, and then today again. But I want you to take a, a look at what it is. It looks to me like the apostolic order in which people that are in need in the house are not allowed to remain in need. Take a look at it. Let's go. Especially under the heat of the economy that we are in in the country at this time. Give us a clip of the welfare of last Sunday. many of you can, can appreciate and celebrate the king of kings? I don't know how you feel, but I feel God. I feel acts of the apostles. I feel distribution was made to every man according as they had need. Beloved brothers and sisters, I trust the Lord that he will help us in ensuring that no one in our midst is stranded and no one in our midst is struggling and no one in our midst is looking for what to eat. Somebody say aloud, loud amen. Especially under the climate we are in globally and especially in our country. Now, two reasons why we have shown this first and foremost to cause the church an awareness of what church is doing and what real church is up to. Number two, to also give brethren opportunity. Oh yeah, I have some bags of rice I want to give to feed our brethren that may be in need. I have some, some allocation of financial resources to make it available. The Bible said in Proverbs 19.17, 
He that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord, and that which has, he has given, the Lord will pay him. It's not necessarily poor. Less privilege of people in need. Give to the needy, um, and the Lord will, will give back, multiply back to you. Also, I want to appeal to those who have received once or twice. Um, don't make it a habit that that is now your source of livelihood. Um, I don't need to work because there is food in the church. That is, you make yourself a total liability. You make yourself a generational liability. Don't do that. Just trust the Lord that if you are in need once or twice or more, after you have been ministered to for a while, yourself will become a major contributor to what is going on. You'll be, you will begin to, the Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So, after you have received a while, ensure that you move to the giving side so that other people's lives and destinies are changed because of yours. God bless you in Jesus' name. And all this is Dunamis home church based. The reason why we are doing that is to ensure that nobody come and pick the food and then go straight to alcoholic joint. Or go straight to the, in fact, pick the food to the house of prostitution. All right? The Bible says do good to all men, especially those that are the household of faith. Christmas feeding, we did it and everybody, all that religion, everybody comes. And they just come and pick and go. In fact, most of our people complain many times that other people come and pick even before them. This one is in-house feeding. Somebody say, man, oh yeah, people of the house, needy people of the house. And when the children have received the bread, then every other person from the outside could get. How many of us are members of the house cell actively? You have a home cell you attend. All right. God bless you. And God bless you. Ensure that you look after your brother and sister in the house fellowship. If you, are not, you don't know your house fellowship yet, lift up your hands. You are not a member or you don't know where to go. Please give them the forms and let them fill up the forms. Once you fill up the forms, you give it to an usher who will assist you. Um to either drop it at the home church desk or you will drop it by yourself at the entrance right there the glory gate and the Lord bless you in Jesus precious name God bless you in Jesus name now while that is going alright a second call how many of us have given our homes as homes cell location the Lord give the blessing of Obedidom the Gittite into your house in Jesus precious name if you need to give your home as a home cell location also, please, lift up your hand anywhere you are. You need to make your home a home cell location. Lift up your hands. Give the forms out, and the Lord bless you. Very, very sharply, this Thursday, we are in Kaduna Healing and Deliverance Crusade. Give the Lord a praise. Kaduna State shall be expressed in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, go ahead and roll the clip. Mrs. Becky Paul Emeche will be storming the sinner for a healing and deliverance crusade. Tact the glory of God. The glory of God will saturate the land. Lives and destinies will be liberated. Bodies will be healed and yokes will be destroyed by the power of God. This will be happening at Amadibalo Stadium, Kaduna. Date, Thursday 21st to Friday 22nd March 2024. Time, 5pm daily. Free post transportation from designated locations. For inquiries, contact 0907-130-2185 or 0806-959-8469. Come and see the Almighty God at work. Jesus is Lord. the way from Cat Poly, they are meeting together. Joint Campus Christian Fellowship is going to be explosive on Saturday morning before we return back. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise as the earth has been filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Now, to get a lot of things out of the way and then we are left with the impartation. Stretch your two hands in front of you. I prophesy upon your hands that your harvest will look for you. In our prayers, tonight, stepping into a new season, invite friends, invite brethren, please ensure that we proceed to keep those works to us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Dr. Ron Kinoli. 
Do you know the song of Ronkinoli? Let me play one for you. to explode on Good Friday night. The theme is it don't finish. Look at your neighbor. Say it don't finish. Oh, Paris. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. Aquare. Anybody understand that? It up, me. Amile. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. A bigger, bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. Hey! Multiply the harvest back to every giver and let the hands lift and never drop to bed in Jesus' name. I'll be taking the altar call shortly. I'm meant to take that before this, but the video. All right, we have the video of the video. Excellent. All right, we'll take that video shortly. Go on ahead. Take your seat, people. Sir, this is Sister Treasure. You talked about somebody whose name starts with T. All right. And she had these conditions on the breast, both breasts, oh. with pains. Oh. And as soon as that declaration was made, all the pains vanished. Over forever in Jesus. Every arrow from hell returned back to hell. Please. This is, this is Sister Tina. Sister Tina, also letter T that you mentioned, came in with a barrage of situations. She came with a swelling in the l l left, right? Left uh, inguinophosal area um, not diagnosed but it was there her husband you know was aware of it and all and also condition in the breast yes with also some rashes that what has happened there. well when you made the declaration all of them vanished Lift your hands sister all Tina vanished. in the name, the name of Jesus of behold our sister's yeah. intervention commenced at the commanding the day in that prayer. She said she was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. Oh. Yes, sir. Affected her speech. She was, oh my God. She was totally weak, bedridden, had to be helped to rise from the bed. And she said God helped her from then. She began to amend. Also, the weakness, everything is gone. When the case was mentioned, myasthenia gravis, lift up your On the 28th of February and 14th of March, both days, 
myasthenia gravis was mentioned. That's a very terrible neurological separation that can make the person paralyzed completely. Lift up your hands. Father, thank you. Jesus, precious name, it is permanently gone. She also came in with this excruciating abdominal condition at the declaration of the word, it vanishes totally. Step forward here. You are healed. Jesus, precious name. Can we be fast? I have two minutes for everybody. This sister's healing started from the um, commanding the day midnight prayer. She'd had this accident. Lift it up. She'd had this accident uh, about a month ago. That today is one month. Case of premature death in the family. She was supposed to have been taken, but her life was preserved. As she came in today, she was not able to walk. She didn't know she could stand, but she discovered stepping into the premises today, all the pain is gone. Healed in Jesus' family. name. And the spirit of death is arrested. Over. Please, all movements are arrested for now. Just give me five minutes. Yes, let's go. Yes, sir. Three of them came with chest condition, but right now, the face of the world, they are healed. Congratulations. It's over in Jesus' name. Sister with shoulder pain and right hand couldn't lift it. She's healed. In Jesus' name, you are healed. Congratulations. Our sister said, each time she gets pregnant, she feels her terrible waist pain. Came in today, she's actually pregnant, but she's healed. In Jesus' name, pregnancy is preserved. The waist pain is gone. Angina pectoris just healed now. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. In the name of Jesus, behold. Thank you, Jesus. Counselor, sister, been married for four years, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. God revealed to her in this service, a well-dressed baby was handed over to her. Wow! Congratulations, counselor. And everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb, your children are in your hands. Another counselor, sister, says she's had this terrible waist pain, and um, at the declaration of the word, God healed that pain. Congratulations, counselors, counselors, counselors. In Jesus' precious name. Brother said he had a bleeding pile, terrible, in the first service when God's servant declared that someone with the name G, his name is also G. Okay, G with the breast pain, but he just connected and, and he was healed. pain is gone. Hallelujah. Every one of you here in the front, your testimonies are permanent in Jesus' name. One more celebration as they return back to their seats. Healing is permanent in Jesus' name. Lift your stick up. Come. Can do Jehovah. Anybody blessed here today, say loud amen. Everywhere you are today, the highest offering you can give to God is your life. While the rest of us will stand up shortly and lift up our materials for impartation, everyone here today in need of forgiveness for sins, you want Jesus to be Lord over your life, carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and come forward here. You are bound by an addiction of smoking of drinking, of womanizing, of masturbation, of prostitution, anything that is an addiction in your life, also stand up on your feet and run to the front here and let me pray for you. Jesus, I want to give myself to you. Come forward and let me pray. I was on evangelism yesterday. I met a doctor on the street while I was evangelizing, where I was evangelizing. Graduate of Ibadan, 1981. That's like... Um, 33 years ago, huh? 43 years ago. You can come forward if you are here. I just called you. I'd like you to join us here too. And I'll pray for you. Quickly, come forward here and I will pray for you. Everyone. Government secondary school students coming out there. All right, government secondary school where? Uh, is it Piakasa or where? We, we, we built this, a chapel that we are meant to be dedicating in one of the government secondary schools. I can FCS Chapel, please. That let one us. is in Gosa. In Gosa, okay. What? Which school is this? Soka. Soka. Okay, Soka. Government Secondary School. Government Secondary School. Come, Government come now. They are first timers. Government so Secondary School. So I shall let them come out. Come forward here. Now you need to surrender your life to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven? You want today to mark a new day in your life? Rush to the frontier and let us 
pray for you. You have given your life to Christ before, okay. but you went back to the world and you want to rededicate your life to God. Also, come forward and let's pray for you. You are bound by an addiction, a negative lifestyle you are not happy with. Come forward and let us pray for you. Children from the school, we are happy. Now, everybody can stand up on your feet and lift up your materials for impartation. I'd like to let you know that very soon we can hold the service at any time and continue for many services if we want. The acoustic work, like you can see, is ongoing and the air condition ducting further air condition ducting is ongoing everywhere. In a short while, the sanctuary will be as cool as you want it to be or probably ask us to turn it off a bit because it's, it's getting too much, right? We trust the Lord to do it. As many as are still interested in being a part of what is going on, it's not too late. The cost of it cannot be mentioned <laughs> so that it doesn't frighten some people. Just ensure that you are a part of anything that is going on in the house of God per time. God bless you in Jesus' name. Cooling system and acoustic seat. Stand up on your feet, everyone. Lift up your materials for impartation and those in the front, place your hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I surrender my life to you. Today I have decided to follow you. No turning back. From today, forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I declare today the hold of the enemy broken off your life. Grace to live for God be released upon you. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody say a loud amen. Now lift up your materials. I pray upon every document lifted. People are lifting phones, lifting materials, lifting documents. I decree today, whatever is lifted up shall return back to you with testimonies. The God who answers by fire is answering you now by fire. In the name of Jesus. Every embargo placed on your life, I declare it lifted. Every embargo placed on your life, I declare them lifted. Every agenda placed on your destiny is hereby lifted. The God who has given us so many testimonies in this house and given so many life's testimonies, that same God is giving you testimonies right now. So shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Shall the Lord say amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious unto you. Go and return with your testimonies. 2024 and above only 2024 and above only God bless you go ahead in celebrations see you 11 30 p.m online all right worship and wonders night advert please let it let it roll to welcome you all for this decision you have made our officers are right with you and they will speak with you if you have any question please ask them they will let us know children from school we are happy to have you the lord bless you and the lord cause you to grow well 
in Jesus' name. Teachers, thank you for coming. God bless you.